What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Leader Class Armada Megatron. Now, I've been really excited to check this one out. The Armada Optimus Prime was near enough flawless, so let's see how Megatron stacks up in comparison. And here we have him fully transformed into that big, mean, green-looking tank. And, I mean, it's definitely a sick update. I mean, if you were to compare this to the original Armada Megatron design and even the old toy, they have come pretty close to recreating it. I will say this is probably the strongest strongest in terms of the way it holds together out of the two modes. I do have a few issues in terms of the robot mode which kind of sucks but for the most part the tank looks nuts and I love how this Megatron design kind of has asymmetry going on so for example nothing on the left hand side for the most part is the same as the right hand side so yeah, that's awesome. And the paintwork in particular is actually pretty top tier on this guy. I mean, we get lots of metallic silver, especially when you check out this main turret. I mean, look at that. Lots of mesh detail. I like how this canopy has been fully decked out in silver. And we also get this little minigun, which I think on the original figure was kind of spring-loaded. You'd need the minicon to kind of eject this thing up and then fire out the missiles. Because this is a new figure, unfortunately, we don't see any of that, which isn't a bad thing. But what I will say is this guy comes with no accessories at all. So in some ways, I do wish maybe they could have thrown in a minicon with this figure because I think that would have gone amiss, but in terms of the main blaster, I mean, damn, look at that. Again, you know, you'd take this on the original figure, launch it back, and a missile would fire out, but the best you're going to get from this guy is that it's blast effect compatible, which, you know, isn't the best thing in the world, but... Yeah, really sick looking Megatron as we flip him here to the underside. For those of you who own the original figure, he does transform near enough exactly the same. So the legs fold up in the same way, the arms collapse in the same way, and yeah, everything does end up in pretty much the same place. But pretty sick looking tank mode. In terms of the treads, unlike the Combiner Wars version, which I think was the last release we saw of this character, the treads are fixed into place. So you do just rely solely on these four wheels. But what I will say is that he rolls like an absolute dream. So definitely a worthy adversary, at least here in terms of alt mode to go up against that Armada Optimus Prime. Which, talking of, here we have the Commander Armada Optimus Prime, and it's kind of crazy to see both of these through my camera, because four or five years ago, it was very rare for Hasbro to kind of branch out of G1, and if they were to do that, nine times out of ten, they would just repaint G1 figures. So, for example, the last time we saw Armada Megatron, he was a repaint slash minor retool of Combiner Wars G1 Megatron, so... Yeah, I mean, imagine what we're going to see in the next four or five years. But just to give you guys a sense of scale of how they stack up from the side, despite Prime being a commander and Megatron being a leader, I don't think there's too much difference. They definitely stack up pretty nicely. And here is just the core Optimus alongside Megatron. Sticking with a few more Armada comparisons, here we have him alongside the Voyager class Star Scream. So they've basically given us the two main Decepticons. I do hope maybe they can branch out into a few more. I mean, we're undoubtedly going to get either a repaint or a retool out of this Megatron into a Galvatron. So yeah, looking forward to seeing as to how that might turn out. Here's the Legacy Deluxe Class Armada Hotshot. So massive difference in terms of size, as you'd expect from a Deluxe to a Leader Class. Here he is alongside the Earthrise G1 Optimus Prime, because I know nine times out of ten, many collectors have this guy. So it should give you a sense of scale between how these two stack up. Here he is next to one of the more recently released Megatrons, that being the Siege Voyager version. Both tanks, but in my opinion, no competition at all. The Armada Megatron absolutely destroys the Siege Megatron in terms of the way these two look. And then finally, just to round things off with, here we have the new Armada Megatron alongside the Combiner Wars Megatron, which, as I said previously, I think was the mold they used for the Armada Megatron before this guy. So if you own that old Armada Megatron, hopefully this should give you a good sense of of how this new figure stacks up. So I believe that just about wraps up everything for Megatron in tank mode. Let's get stuck into the transformation, which as I said previously, really and truly is just a reuse of the engineering from the original Armada Megatron figure. So to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to take these pieces and just extend those upwards. We can then detach what will become the leg away from the side of the tank. So just unhook this piece and then extend this section here all the way down and just collapse this panel. So do the exact same here for this side, detach the leg away from the side of the tank, hinge this piece here all the way down, snap that into place, and now is where you're going to want to take the upper part of the tank and the legs and basically just extend this section down so we can rotate the waist around to its correct configuration and then we can just snap that back into place. This is the feature that we'll use for the Evo Fusion gimmick which I'll show in just a second. You'll then want to take the toes and just hinge them forwards, although they are very difficult to actually click into place and in some ways I wish they'd used a very similar mechanism to the shoulders which you guys also will see in a second, but just snap those up, fold the heel spurs out to the sides. You'll then want to take these sections, detach those away from the shoulder and snap them into the side of the chest. 
So do the same here for this side. Take these little purple panels, hinge them upwards because they do slightly groove over these orange sections. And then we can just take the shoulders and hinge them down and do the exact same here for this side. Next up, you're then gonna wanna take the chest piece, pull this away from the body, take this panel and slide it inwards. Now, in some ways, I wish they'd just carried over the engineering from the original figure where you take this piece and slide it up and down because it just seems like there's way too many steps than what you actually need. But anyway, just snap that back in. We can then take these panels, fold these down, and then take the arms, detach them, bring them here all the way down and snap that there back into place. Do the exact same here for this side. So take the arm, pull it out of that hollow cavity and just snap that up. Snap these pieces down, flip out the wrists on both sides. Let's just straighten up the torso. Now, depending on how you want to display the tank turret, you could basically leave it like this. But personally, I like to kind of have the main turret itself underslung and then we can just bring these arms down and bang, here we have our modern Megatron fully transformed into his robot mode. And yeah, this guy looks pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. In terms of the sculpt and the paint, he looks terrific. But does he have a few issues in the way he articulates and kind of holds together? Definitely, which we will get into in just a second. But I mean, if we compare our modern Megatron to his actual character design, I think this might be the closest they've ever come to really capturing how he looked in that old 2002-2003 show. But anyway, as we check out the face sculpt, that looks so awesome. A lot better than some of those initial promo images and I love these kind of massive antlers that this Armada Megatron had you know they definitely didn't skimp out in terms of the scale we get these enormous shoulders which unfortunately will cause for some issues in just a second but really nice sculpt and paintwork to go back to my earlier point I love how Armada Megatron has this asymmetry going on so the chest panels on this side are completely different to this side the same can also be said for the forearm sculpt even the hand sculpt now when this guy was first unveiled I did wonder why this one looked so different to this side and I think it's a callback to the original Armada Megatron figure because the hand was sculpted very similar to this and it was so that you could kind of slide out a blade So I am wondering if again in the future We may see a multi-pack of mini cons and that's the way they're gonna kind of give him that blade I guess only time will tell but yeah lovely mechanical plating that we have here for the torso I love the way the legs look again lots of asymmetry, but fully sculpted for the most part This guy is pretty filled in besides the forearms I do wish in some ways they could have smacked in a few additional panel covers much like we saw from legacy blitzwing and Earthrise prime But a very solid looking Megatron now in terms of articulation the head is on a ball joint So it will look up and down as well as rotate left to right I will say that the antlers are kind of separate pieces so they will have a tendency to maybe detach They are just held on via two little plugs So I mean they are very easy to kind of smack back in the head but as we come into the shoulders these are by far the weakest part about the figure and if you didn't like the legacy g2 laser prime you're gonna hate these so they are fixed into place they cannot rotate forwards and backwards which you know isn't the end of the world would have i liked them to absolutely but when you use the main shoulder joint if you hinge this out to the side watch this if you want to bring it back down bang it does bring that whole tread assembly with it and that sucks it's an issue which is also on this side so you know if you want to bring them down they do just seem to flop around all the time and it's such an easy fix i mean come on had they engineered just a tiny little notch to go into this screw hole they would have been solidified and to be honest with you guys i'm quite uncertain as to why these aren't on ratchet joints because the feet joints are so stiff to move why they couldn't have done the same here for these is just beyond me and i know they're on a screw i've tried my best to tighten it up but it's had no effect whatsoever so Unfortunately, I do just think it's the way it's been designed. So yeah, that's a little bit frustrating But anyway, you can take these panels hinge these to the front and you know You do get full range going forwards and backwards. We do get a nice bicep rotation slightly past 90 only on a single bend here out of the elbow as well as a wrist rotation We do get a pretty nice waist joint despite the whole kind of extending torso gimmick So that's pretty cool soft clicky joints here out of the hips Definitely not the greatest I can imagine over time them kind of turning mushy and not working at all But you'll get roughly, you know slightly past 90 that also kick back I'd say about to that far he can do the splits on pinch joints but unfortunately they don't hold up for nothing they are very loose and because the main turret itself is kind of hefty I think if you were to have this guy on a flat surface he'd probably do the splits because even on this side watch this it doesn't take much at all to kind of unlock that so yeah, that's a bit of a shame, but we do get a thigh rotation, much like the hips, those kind of soft, mushy, clicky joints out of the knees. And due to the way he transforms, you can also take advantage out of this hinge joint. So if you wanted to have him in a slightly wider stance, you know, that's definitely something you can do. And in terms of the ankles, they do rock side to side wicked. And I love how they kind of sculpted in that additional detail. So it's not just one clean cut. So there are quite a lot of things here, which are awesome, especially in terms of the way he sculpted and painted. But those shoulders, unfortunately, I do just think are the biggest downfall that this guy has. Now, 
Now, in terms of Evo Fusion, as I said previously, he comes with no accessories, so we can't smack on, you know, a Star Saber or any Minicons, but what we can do is take the upper and lower part of the body, extend these pieces up, which does reveal some very nice detail. We can then kind of flip the turret out to the side, take this piece, angle it backwards, and then rotate this here all the way around, much like you could on the original Armada figure. Then snap this back into place, lift this piece up, flip these pieces here forwards, and there is your Evo Fusion gimmick, which, not gonna lie, I actually really like it. You know, I'm glad that this is a feature they carried over into this figure, but if you flip him around to the back, when you do flip this forwards, it does reveal a few additional ports, which you don't need in either robot or tank mode. So again, I am wondering if maybe they have an intention for a bit of future compatibility, maybe with a tidal wave, maybe with some mini cons. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but that's really nicely sculpted. And in terms of this, you can rotate it forwards and backwards but as I said in tank mode you cannot rotate it the full 360 and I do wonder if that's the kind of avoid you placing this turret into some slightly sus angles because you cannot get this kind of facing downwards and forwards it does stop at a certain point and the same could be said if you rotate it to the left so you know maybe that's why they did it and also you can take the tip of the cannon detach it take any of the hands it doesn't matter which one fold this in place this over the top to kind of give him this arm cannon which is actually pretty sick not gonna lie but yeah, that is basically Megatron in robot mode. Let's check out a few comparisons. So, first up, here we have Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime, just as the core robot, and I really like this scale. Do you know, in the show, Megatron was much bigger than Optimus without the super mode, and that is so perfectly captured here. Personally, I've always liked it when Megatron is bigger. You know, he should be a big bad threat for the Autobots to go up against, and yeah, I think this looks awesome. Here we have the Legacy Armada Starscream, and to go back to my earlier point about the lack of a Star Saber or any accessory, this one is just not cutting it for me, I'm not gonna lie. So, unless they are gonna give us a multi pack of minicons in the future which can form a slightly bigger star saber then we definitely should have got a larger one here included with megatron because i mean look at it it's just so puny it looks more like a toothpick that megatron would use than an actual star saber but yeah between these two i think they also fare up pretty nicely here we have the legacy deluxe class hotshot Earthrise Optimus Prime. Here we have the War for Cybertron Netflix Megatron. The G1 version of that Combiner Wars Megatron, which again, I think was retooled into the most recent Armada Megatron before this guy came out. So yeah, there is quite a big difference in terms of the size, but in terms of the sculpt and the accuracy to the show, hands down, got to give it here to the new Legacy version. It does destroy the Combiner Wars Armada Megatron, in my opinion. And then finally, just because there would be no way that I'd round off this review without showing off this comparison, here we have Legacy Megatron alongside Armada Prime in the super mode. And yeah, this scale does appear to be pretty bang on. I mean, I think in the show, Prime uses kind of the super mode legs and ejects them, propels them at Megatron to take him clean out. So yeah, these guys look pretty awesome next to each other. And as I said previously, we are getting a pretty decent amount of the core Armada cast. So I hope that after Megatron, they can begin to delve into a few others, especially if they do have plans to give us a tidal wave. And in the case of Prime, a new overload. So, despite us kickstarting things off in tank mode, don't you guys worry, yes, I will be showing off the reverse transformation. So, to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to take the hands and just fold them up into those hollow cavities. We can then take the underslung cannon, just hinge it out to the side, and to be fair, you can just kind of rotate it upwards for now. Then what you're going to want to do is take these panels, open them upwards, and there is a tiny little circular peg that is going to shoot into the mech tech port that we have on the side of the arm. So, lift that up, snap that into place, and then peg that in. Do the exact same here for this side. So open this up, just slide these arms in, snap that in, and then I'd recommend personally to take these pieces, just hinge them upwards, as now we're gonna take the chest piece, pull this forwards, take the face cover, hinge this out and snap that there into place. We can then take the shoulders, and if they haven't done so already, you know, loose and floppy, just hinge them all the way up, just like this, and then these little panels would just kind of collapse over the top of the orange sections. We can then take these pieces, detach those, and then they lock the shoulders into place. So it does kind of suck why this doesn't work the same in the robot mode, because that is definitely where I think a locking mechanism should have been engineered. But do the same here for this side. We can then come here to the waist, extend this here all the way up, rotate it around, and then snap it back into place. We can then take the toes, hinge these down, very stiff joints, do the same here for this side and just snap the ankles into place, take the heel spurs, flip these pieces down, take these panels here and just open them upwards. And then it is just a case of collapsing the thighs in upon themselves, snapping those panels into place, doing the same here for this side. So make sure 
they're locked into place, come here to the base, snap these panels in, and then flip this little sentry turret up, and bang, there is Megatron back in his tank mode. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Armada Megatron. Overall, it's definitely a very nicely done looking figure. I mean, in terms of the way it looks in robot and tank mode, very accurate, very faithful to Transformers Armada, and is probably the best looking official Megatron that we've seen released for that series. But unfortunately, in terms of the way the shoulders have been designed, I think they suck. Because, you know, to be fair, I don't mind so much that they can't move forwards and backwards, but to see there is no locking mechanism to click them into place when they're just kind of standing there and you're using the shoulder joint it's just so annoying i mean to pose this guy they continuously want to flop down or they want to fold inwards i just think you know there was a very easy remedy for that had they smacked in a few ratchet joints had they added in an additional catch it literally would have solved that issue and to be fair would have made this guy all round a near enough 10 out of 10 but as it stands i'd say in terms of enjoyability i'd give it about 7 out of 10 those shoulders really are super fiddly to mess around with but tank and robot mode do look awesome transformation easy enough for a leader class but i also wish maybe they'd included a few accessories you know had they just given us an upscale of the star saber that we saw with starscream i would have taken that and then would have been even happier had they thrown in at least one minicon because this guy does have a lot of ports throughout him which unless you have a few other war for cybertron or legacy figures you're really not going to get much out of so i am hoping that eventually down the line we will get a minicon multi-pack because that would be really sick but it's definitely a solid figure you know if you can find the way to keep those shoulders in place then it is definitely a really nice megatron to kind of pair alongside that armada optimus prime but for the price tag, I do just think these are issues which should have been fixed before this guy hit production. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of this Armada Megatron? And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.